Hi everyone, it's Sandra from The Schwoben's Nest. Welcome to my Christmas series. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you could click that red button. Now let's get into crafting. I saw this beautiful setup of these bottle brush trees on a long wood plank and I thought, you know what, that would be so beautiful to create but also very simple, easy and inexpensive to create. It was online at the linen chest for $90 on sale for $63. The first thing to do was gather my collection of bottle brush trees and you guys know that you can find them at dollar stores but if you're having a hard time finding different styles and colors there is a really wonderful set that I have on my Amazon store. This is what it looks like and I'll leave the link for you down in my description box. You get 30 pieces in different sizes and you can also select from different colors. The trees that I have, some of them have longer wire stems some of them don't they have them right close up to the branches but all i'm going to do is unscrew all the little wooden discs and then trim them down next i got out my rotary tool and i added a regular drill bit bit into it which fit perfectly and the reason i'm doing this is some of the bottle brush trees had that white plastic mound of snow at the bottom you've probably seen that as well i needed to take that off and then drill a hole into these little slices that you can get from the Dollar Tree as well. And that gave me the opportunity to be able to take the little wire piece of each of the trees and hot glue it right inside the hole. I found the perfect piece of wood to use for this project. I had it in my stash. And next, all that's left to do is to hot glue the trees right onto it. I've got them arranged to look a little bit like the inspiration picture, some little varying heights and different colors. And I think this turned out absolutely beautiful for only about $5. I love this craft. Today's video is a collab with my best friend, Sonia. She has many channels up on YouTube. Today, I'm going to showcase her DIY channel, which is what you're seeing right now. And then she has a home channel and it's called At Home with Sonia, where she's decorating her whole house for the Christmas season right now. She puts up five Christmas trees and decorates her whole house from top to bottom and you're going to get so much inspiration so make sure you click the links in my description box below and head on over to Sonia's channels and see what she's doing. This is the inspiration that is for my next project. It is a Christmas ornament, a little frame, $93.00. OMG, are you kidding me? I don't care who painted that, who the artist is. There's no way you need to spend $93 on a Christmas ornament. What you see me doing here is adding some tape to a piece of rice paper and I'm taping it to just a regular piece of printer paper. I'm going to then run that through my printer with this cute little graphic that I got off of Creative Fabrica. I'm using one of these small plastic frames that come from the Dollar Tree and they do look like they're a wood grain. Now I'm just going to cut out my little snowman guy and I sized him to the size of the frame that it needs to go in. I'm also going to use the paper on the back just to give it a little bit more substance. So I'll just make sure that it fits and simply just put the backing right into the frame. I'm using some burnt umber and one of my little chip brushes to dry brush onto the frame. I want that faux wood grain to peek through, but I want the frame to be a little bit darker like the inspiration. This turned out so stinking cute. I didn't put a hanger on it because I think this will be a little too big for my tree, but I think it looks beautiful just standing on the shelf. Thank you. 
Smith inspirational piece is absolutely gorgeous. And I know it's a canister, so it would have cost them quite a bit just to get the actual beautiful canister itself and then put the image on. I have an Etsy shop myself. I know how much time it takes, but I still wouldn't pay $65 for something like this. And I would never expect anybody else to pay $65 for something like this. As you can see, I started off with one of these big jars. I had a white canister in my stash somewhere, but for the life of me, I couldn't find it. So I thought, you know what, I'll just make do with this one. So what I'm doing is putting some tape on it because I thought I was going to just have some of the glass showing through. But at the end, I ended up going all the way to the top and just leaving a tiny portion of glass at the bottom and at the top. I'm giving it one coat of a clear matte spray with Rust-Oleum just so the chalk paint can stick better to the glass. Now that the sealer is dry, you can see that it takes on a frosty look. So if you ever wanted to do some type of etching, this would be a perfect spray to use. I'm using some chalk paint in white Adirondack. I believe it's from Folk Art. And I'm using one of my Stallmaster brushes. I love these. I have three of them. They are my favorite to use simply because they clean up so easily just by running water over them and the paint slides right off the bristles and give a beautiful finish to your projects. I have all of these listed in my Amazon store. I created the graphic that was on the inspiration piece. I did this in Canva and then printed it off on a piece of tissue paper. I'm going to cut it fairly close to the edge of the image because I don't want any extra hanging out on the canister. This will be available in my Etsy shop as a digital download. I'm going to use Mod Podge to apply the tissue paper image to the canister. And I'm only going to be putting the Mod Podge on the canister and under the image. I'm not going to be brushing the Mod Podge on top of my image because there's a lot of black ink on it and I don't want it to smudge. To seal it up, I'm going to take my matte Rust-Oleum sealer again and just give it a quick spray when I'm done. I'm going to use my fingers to just gently rub over the image, tapping it and making sure I get all of the bubbles and creases out. You could also use a soft cloth or a tissue to dab because sometimes the oils from your fingers can also smudge the ink. Altogether, I think this would have cost me about $15. I did have the jar in my stash, but I checked online and these jars usually go for about $15. I have the paint, I have the tissue paper, I have the printer, so that didn't cost me anything. I love how this turned out and I dressed it up a little bit with a ribbon to make it look more festive. This last inspiration isn't that expensive, but I hadn't done any snowmen at all this year, so I decided to do something with this one. Now, I don't have any styrofoam balls, and the only balls I had were these ornaments. So I'm just very carefully taking some needle nose pliers and pulling off the little piece at the top. I want this to be as flat as possible. I needed to use something as the base of the snowman so it could stand on its own. So I grabbed one of these mason jar lids and you can see that there's a whole bunch of this that is sticking out. So I'm going to take a marker. I'm going to mark where it needs to get cut. And then I'm going to use my rotary tool with the saw cutting blade. And I'm just going to cut this right off. It came off so easy. Now, this is a plastic bulb. I would not suggest doing this with anything other than plastic. Maybe you could do it with a metal ball, but definitely not with glass. I'm going to use a pretty good amount of hot glue to glue these two together. Now I'm going to use hot glue and I'm going to have to hold it in place until the glue sets up because there's not a lot of contact surface. And I didn't mention before, but all of these ornaments are different sizes. So the one at the bottom is large and then I have a medium one and a small one. 
to make this little snowman look like he's ceramic, I'm actually going to be adding some clay and that will help me to build up the sections in between the ornaments so it doesn't look quite so skinny in the neck and the body of the snowman. So I'm just going to be rolling out thin pieces of clay. They don't have to be very thick at all. I think I went down to about an eighth of an inch. And then I'm just very gently going to be starting to press it onto the ornaments and fill it all up till I get to the top. Using my fingers, I'm just going to very gently press down any of the creases until I get this sticking on there. And with that mason jar lid at the bottom, it gave it a really nice base to stick to because the mason jar has some ridges on it. So you just have to take your time and be very careful not to push too hard. You don't want to crack your ornaments. If you want to recreate this project, I would definitely suggest getting some styrofoam or foam balls because that will just make it so much easier to work with. For the spaces in between the ornaments, I made sure not to push the clay in too far because I still wanted this to have a nice snowman shape. I waited 24 hours for the clay to harden and dry and now I'm taking the sanding disc of my rotary tool and sanding off any of the bigger bumps. I don't mind if there's some bumps in there because that will just give me some extra texture, although the inspiration is ceramic, so it's really nice and smooth. But I'm okay with that. I like having little lumps and bumps because then it looks like a real snowman. The sanding tool is very easy to use. You just have to be careful that you don't press too hard because you don't wanna take off too much of the clay. The inspiration piece didn't have a lot of embellishments, but it did have a little nose and three little buttons. So I'm taking this half inch dowel and I'm using my miter shears just to cut a chunk off of it. Then I'm gonna get over to my rotary tool again and I'm gonna use the sanding disc again to create somewhat of a point on this little piece. I'm gonna hold it with my needle nose pliers and then just keep sanding down until I get the look that I'm going for for my snowman's nose. Here you can see the angle that I'm already getting just by using the rotary sanding tool. Here's the final shape and I think it turned out really good. I'm using three little wooden beads for the buttons and so I'm just adding some of this drywall compound just onto the one end of the bead so it looks like there isn't a hole. I used hot glue to add the nose and the buttons to the snowman. And once they were completely dry, I gave them a couple of coats of white chalk paint using a tiny little brush. Although this snowman took me a little bit longer than I anticipated, I still think he turned out absolutely adorable. You'll have to let me know what you think of my snowman. I hope my projects today inspired you to create some of your own looks for less. Make sure you head on down to the description box to see all of the links I have available for you. And don't forget to click on Sonia's channel links and her video. You're definitely going to want to see what she's created for our collab. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I truly appreciate it. See you in the next one.